Estimating the cost of capital is an important component of evaluating the desirability of a project using tools like net present value. Now, suppose we want to estimate the cost of capital for a firm that doesn't have publicly traded stock. Now, you may recall from some of my previous videos that you could estimate the cost of equity by taking the firm's beta for its stock and then using the capital asset pricing model in order to determine the cost of equity. But let's say that this firm doesn't have publicly traded equity. What can we do? Or perhaps we're in the position where we want to evaluate a project that our firm is doing, but this is not this doesn't have the same level of risk as the average level of risk of the firm. Okay? The assumption of weighted average cost of capital is that projects have the same level of risk as other projects the firm has done or uses the, uses the same capital structure, that is the same debt and equity to finance the firm. So what can we do here? Well, one way to do this is to find a comparable firm. In some cases, a firm we refer to as a pure play. Now, the comparable firm may be a firm that's quite similar to us that uh, has has um, <clears throat> publicly traded stocks so we can estimate their beta. If on the other hand we wanted to evaluate a specific project then we might like to look for a firm that's referred to as a pure play, a firm that only does one thing. Okay, For example, if you look at a company like General Electric they do a lot of different things. They make wind turbines, uh, I believe they make engines for, for uh, jets, they make uh, refrigerators, they have a financial group, they do a lot of different things. And each one of those lines of business, each one of those divisions has a different level of risk. So if they were doing a project related to things like refrigerators and washers and dryers, they might like to find a firm that really specializes in those, see what their beta is, see what their systematic risk is, and use that to help them determine uh, the risk for that project. All right, how do we do this approach? Well, there are several steps. First, we want to select the comparable company. Okay, and we may choose one company, we may choose several companies. If we can find several companies in the same line of business or several companies that are similar to ours, then we may choose several and take an average of their betas. And we want them to have a similar level of risk or similar lines of business. Okay, we'll estimate the comparables beta and then we want to unlever the comparables beta because we want to remove the financial risk component of the equity, equity beta. Okay, the equity beta is going to be made up of financial risk as well as business risk. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lever the beta for the project's financial risk, for our project's financial risk. Now, the, to get the weighted average cost of capital, we need to have the beta for assets. And that's just going to be a weighted average of the betas for debt and equity that the firm has. WD represents the proportion of debt used to finance the firm, and WE represents the proportion of equity used to finance the firm. So it's just an average of these two. Okay, if we want to expand these, the weight would just be for debt, debt divided by debt plus equity. And for equity, it would be equity divided by the total value of the firm, which is debt plus equity. Now, because interest is tax deductible, we need to make an adjustment. Okay, for every dollar the firm pays in interest payments, it doesn't cost the firm a dollar because Uncle Sam lets you deduct some of that expense, that interest expense. So, for example, if you're in the 30% tax bracket, for every dollar in interest your company pays, it saves 30 cents in taxes. So we adjust debt by 1 minus T. And you've seen this in, in other calculations we've done in the other weighted average cost of cal uh, weighted average cost of capital calculations we've done. 
if we do a little bit of manipulation, assuming that the debt, the beta debt, is equal to zero, that is, there's no systematic risk for the debt. The first term drops out, and we do a little bit of algebra here, and we get that the beta for the asset equals the beta for the equity times 1 over 1 plus, okay, bracket, 1 minus t, d over e, debt equity ratio, close the bracket. All right, let's take a look at an example. Okay, we have the equation, but it's a little bit nicer if we look at an example. Okay, suppose the pure play we find has an equity beta of 1.5 and a debt to equity ratio of 0.4. And it's also assumed that the marginal tax rate is 30%. Well, we can find the company's asset beta by simply substituting in uh, these numbers into our equation. 1.5 for beta, 1 minus 0.3, okay, 0.3 being the tax rate, and then 0.4 for the debt equity ratio. And we get an asset beta of 1.1719. So what are we saying here? We're saying that this is the business risk and the additional you know point you know three three two or so three two eight one is due to the debt the firm uses now suppose that our firm uses a higher debt to equity ratio okay we take this one point one seven one nine this asset beta and we just substitute in here, okay? This was the denominator when we had beta for assets equal to beta, uh, the equity beta divided by this. So we just, we're just solving for the beta for the equity. So we multiplied both sides by this term. And if you do this, you're leveraging up the beta. So we should use not 1.5, but 1.5821 as our beta because we happen to be using a higher debt equity ratio. There's more financial risk for our project because we're using more leverage than the other firm. And in this case, if we don't do that leveraging, we'll be using too low a beta and we should be using a higher beta which will lead to a higher cost of capital. And keep that in mind, if we use too low a cost of capital, too low, low a cost of equity capital, we're going to perhaps accept a project that really isn't desirable. All right, just to finish off this example, okay, suppose that we know the expected return on the market is 15% and the risk-free rate is 3%. Well, we can substitute in to the capital asset pricing model and if we used a beta of 1.5, which was what our comparable had, we would get an equity, uh, a required return for equity of 25.5%. But because we're using more leverage, we should use a beta of 1.5821. And if you do that calculation, we should use a little bit higher interest rate or a little higher cost of equity capital of 26.7%. And again, to get the right solutions, you want to make sure that you use the correct numbers. And there wasn't a huge difference in the debt equity ratios between our firm and the other firm, 0.4 versus uh, 0.5. But if we had a much higher debt equity ratio, we could be using uh, a significantly lower required return for equity in our calculations and wind up accepting projects that are not desirable. So. If you, um, I hope this was helpful, and if you need to, go back and check out some of my other tutorials on calculating the cost of equity as well as calculating the weighted average cost of capital.